السلام عليكم I am Dr. Muhammad Al-Qahtani from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control In this lecture, inshallah, we will talk about the dialysis event surveillance methodology At the beginning, let's talk about some information uh, or some introduction about the hemodialysis treatment in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, according to the last uh, published uh, statistical uh, report, uh, it was found that the prevalence of renal replacement therapy in Saudi Arabia is estimated about 294 uh, per million population. We have more than 20,000 patients are currently on dialysis uh, treatment. Uh, bacteremia and localized uh, infection of the vascular access site are important, one of the most important causes of increased morbidity and uh, mortality in hemodialysis patient. Uh, it is uh, well known that hemodialysis patients are uh, at high risk of infection due to uh, several uh, reasons uh, because of recurrent hospital visits uh, when they receive the hemodialysis treatment. Also the use of invasive devices uh, during the treatment, multiple comorbidity condition, uh, also the chronic condition uh, for this type of population or for this type of patient uh, in addition to the uh, low immune uh, status. So infection hemodialysis uh, patient can lead to serious complication ranging from uh, hospitalization, increasing the treatment cause, uh, the antimicrobial uh, use uh, for uh, this patient and subsequent microbial resistance and can lead to a more serious complication, which is the death. Uh, so uh, it is very important to target this population by measuring and tracking the rate of the infection and utilizing this information uh, for uh, the prevention strategy for uh, this type of infection or event. Uh, there is even surveillance uh, methodology that we will uh, follow. It is same for, uh, like for uh, the other surveillance uh, module, which is active surveillance. That means a trained person, uh, mainly the infection control practitioner. They are uh, going uh, to search about the cases by applying the case definition and by exploring all the patient uh, sources of information to uh, identify the cases, patient-based surveillance, that means we are monitoring uh, the patient care uh, process while they are receiving uh, the treatment in the center and uh, exploring all the sources uh, related to the patient. Uh, prospective surveillance, this is this mean uh, with the time from the present uh, to the future, that means we are monitoring the patient care process uh, in each time that they receive the uh, hemodialysis uh, treatment in the center. Uh, priority directed uh, or targeted surveillance, that means we are targeting specific uh, events in this specific uh, population uh, in specific uh, location. So we are defining uh, our target from uh, this surveillance. Uh, risk adjusted uh, rate, rate are controlled for variation in the distribution of major risk factor associated with the uh, event, like uh, the type of the event and the type of vascular access that used uh, on that uh, patient. Also, uh, risk-adjusted rate, it allow for uh, inter and intra-facility rate comparison and benchmarking. Where we can apply the dialysis event uh, surveillance, the dialysis event surveillance uh, methodology designated for uh, the outpatient hemodialysis center, the center may be uh, a separate center or may be attached or affiliated with the uh, hospital. Uh, the most important thing uh, to understand that the dialysis event surveillance is applied for the outpatient hemodialysis center. Uh, the inpatient uh, is not suitable for use uh, this type of surveillance. So our target population uh, in the dialysis event surveillance, uh, the hemodialysis uh, outpatient that are receiving hemodialysis uh, treatment or maintenance hemodialysis. It also include uh, the transient patient that are temporarily uh, receiving the treatment at your facility or at your center for short time 
uh, period. Uh, for example, if they are uh, some patient uh, at the time of the vacation may travel to another region or another uh, area and uh, going to the uh, another center uh, in this region. So we call it uh, this one transient uh, patient defined that the patient that receive fewer than 30 days of uh, treatment or at least uh, 13 uh, treatment. Uh, it include uh, also peritoneal uh, dialysis patient or transplant patient that undergoing temporary hemodialysis. Uh, it include also the outpatient with acute kidney injury and the uh, uh, patient with acute kidney injury is defined as uh, by three uh, points, no diagnosis of end-stage uh, renal disease and uh, the uh, physician diagnosis of acute kidney injury or the presence of documentation of acute kidney injury in the patient uh, medical uh, file uh, and also no more than six months has passed since the patient initiate the outpatient hemodialysis therapy. Excluded uh, population from this type of uh, surveillance, the non-hemodialysis uh, patient, uh, like the peritoneal uh, dialysis patient and the inpatient, as we mentioned before, it's ex excluded from this type uh, of surveillance. First, uh, we have to know the vascular access type that can be used uh, on the dialysis patient for uh, undergoing the hemodialysis uh, treatment. We have uh, the arteriovenous fistula uh, vascular axis, uh, the arteriovenous graft, the tunnel center line, which is the permanent center line, non tunnel center line uh, or temporary center line. We have also other access devices like the catheter graft, hybrid, and uh, board access uh, device. Uh, from this lecture uh, uh, and uh, from this slide, we have to know that from the uh, available information from the literature that the risk of infection uh, is uh, increased or decreased according to the vascular axis. If we can look here uh, in the uh, uh, bottom of the slide, the uh, type of vascular axis and the increased risk of infection associated with this type of vascular axis, we can found that the non tunnel center line or the temporary center line taking the highest risk of infection and we will go to uh, until the fistula vascular access with the uh, lowest infection risk. Uh, and we will give uh, a brief information about each vascular access type in the next slide. The arteriovenous uh, fistula uh, vascular access, it is a surgically created uh, connection between the artery and vein to provide uh, a vascular access. So uh, we have surgically created direct connection between the artery and vein uh, to serve as a, a vascular access for this dialysis patient. Arteriovenous uh, graft or uh, the graft, a surgically created connection between the artery and vein uh, by using implant and synthetic uh, tube for uh, the purpose uh, of providing permanent vascular access for this type uh, of patient. Permanent uh, center line or tunnel center line, uh, the central venous catheter that are travel a distance uh, under the skin from the point uh, of the insertion uh, until uh, before uh, terminate uh, at or close to the heart or one of the great uh, vessel. Uh, for example, uh, like the Hickman catheter or uh, Profia catheter. So it is a central venous catheter that travel uh, a distance under the skin before uh, terminating at the heart or uh, to one of the great vessels. The temporary center line or non tunneled uh, center line, uh, it is the central venous catheter that are uh, inserted uh, directly from the skin, which is the point of uh, entry. Uh, to the uh, vein uh, and terminate uh, at the heart or uh, or close uh, to the heart or the uh, one of the great uh, vessel and usually this type of uh, vascular access is intended for a short time uh, use for hemodialysis treatment. Board access uh, device, it is uh, a fully implanted access device uh, under the skin 
for example like the, the life site the definition of the dialysis uh, event we have three main uh, dialysis event uh, type we will monitor uh, on the hemodialysis outpatient uh, the IV antimicrobial start the positive uh, blood culture the presence of pus or redness or increased swelling at the vascular access site and we will talk about each uh, dialysis event type uh, in the next slide we have to define the date of event uh, of the dialysis event uh, for this three dialysis event type the IV antimicrobial start the positive blood culture and the presence of uh, bus redness or increased swelling uh, for the IV antimicrobial start the date of event is the date of the first outpatient dose of an antimicrobial course the positive blood culture the date of event is the date of specimen collection uh, the presence of bus or redness or increased swelling uh, the date of event is the date of the onset uh, of the symptoms uh, in case if there is combination between the previous three uh, dialysis event type we will take the earliest date uh, of event of the uh, three type we have also to define or to know uh, the 21 day rule in the dialysis event it is same like the repeat infection time frame uh, concept uh, on the other module which was uh, 14 day here in the dialysis event surveillance it is uh, a 21 uh, day so what 21 day rule uh, say it say uh, there must be uh, 21 or more days must be uh, exist between uh, two dialysis event of the same type for the same patient for the second event to be uh, reported as a separate event for example if the patient have a dialysis event I feel antimicrobial start for example uh, I cannot report uh, another uh, uh, IV antimicrobial start on this uh, same patient until 21 day uh, has gone uh, from the previous event or uh, they have a positive blood culture uh, I, I, can, I can't report uh, another uh, positive blood culture event uh, for this patient until 21 day uh, or more days uh, have gone uh, since the last reported positive blood culture so uh, the 21 uh, day rule it's applied to the same uh, dialysis event for the same patient and it's applied uh, and across the calendar month and we will have uh, example for each dialysis event type how to define the 21 day rule uh, and how to uh, report this event the first uh, dialysis event type which is the IV antimicrobial start uh, you will report all the start of intravenous antibiotic or antifungal that are administered in the outpatient setting regardless the reason for uh, administration uh, it is related to the vascular access or not related you will report regardless for uh, the reason of administration of this uh, antimicrobial uh, the start uh, is defined as the single outpatient dose or the first outpatient dose of antimicrobial course. Report uh, the outpatient start uh, that are a continuation of inpatient treatment or a continuation for uh, another outpatient dialysis uh, facility. Uh, the antiviral start, the IV antiviral start, it is uh, excluded. So do not report the uh, antiviral start only the antibiotic or antifungal IV uh, start how to calculate the 21 day rule for the IV antimicrobial start you will calculate the 21 day uh, from the end of the first IV antimicrobial start to the beginning of the uh, second IV antimicrobial uh, start to say if the uh, second IV antimicrobial start can be reported uh, or not according to the 21 day rule even if there is uh, a different antimicrobial uh, used on that patient you will stock to the uh, 21 day rule for reporting the second uh, IV antimicrobial start so again if the IV antimicrobial are stopped for less than 21 days and then restarted the second start is not considered a new dialysis event because uh, of the 21 day rule 
Uh, also, to apply the 21 day rule to the outpatient IV antimicrobial start that are a continuation of inpatient treatment, you will consider the start day uh, to be the first day of outpatient treatment. Uh, to take example uh, about 21 day rule uh, for the IV antimicrobial start, the first uh, example, uh, if we look to the end uh, of the first uh, antimicrobial uh, course and the start of the second uh, antimicrobial uh, course, it is uh, the gap is about 23 days, which is more than 21. So this dialysis event uh, is reported. Uh, the second one, uh, the uh, time period is less than 21 uh, day, uh, which is 18 days. So the second uh, start of the IV antimicrobial uh, is not reported on the uh, second example. So I will look to the end of the first antimicrobial course to the start uh, of the second IV antimicrobial start to see uh, uh, it is a 21 day more or less so I can decide uh, to report the second event uh, or not. The second uh, type of there is event which is the positive blood culture. Uh, report all the positive blood culture uh, collected as outpatient or collected within the first two uh, calendar day after hospital admission. Uh, so we know that after uh, two calendar day of hospital admission will be uh, related to the uh, healthcare associated infection. Uh, so uh, we will report all the positive blood culture regardless uh, there is a true infection or suspected infection or the infection is thought to be uh, related to the hemodialysis or the treatment uh, is received or not. So uh, I will uh, report all the positive culture collected uh, at uh, the outpatient center or collected within the first two calendar day after hospital admission. The date of the blood culture uh, result is the date of the uh, blood specimen collection, not the date of the uh, receiving of the laboratory result. This is uh, a common mistake that may uh, face some uh, ICB in the uh, facility or in the hemodialysis center. So I will take the, uh, the date of the uh, blood specimen collection, which is the date of the positive blood culture. Again, how to apply a 21 day rule for the positive blood culture. There must be 21 day uh, or more between two positive blood culture to report the second uh, positive blood culture as uh, a new dialysis event. Uh, even if there is uh, a new uh, microorganism identified from the second positive blood culture, if not uh, more than 21 day have gone, I will add the new organism to the previous reported positive blood culture. Here are uh, example about uh, how to apply the 21 day rule for the positive uh, blood culture. In the first example, the gap between the two positive blood culture is less than 21 day. It is a 15 day. So the second positive blood culture will not report it for the same patient. Then the second uh, example, it is about 21 day uh, uh, between the two positive blood culture. So the second positive blood culture will be reported in this case. It is required also when you uh, report the positive blood culture to uh, identify the suspected source uh, of this positive blood culture, uh, the vascular axis suspected source of the positive blood culture, if there is uh, objective evidence of vascular axis infection, and the vascular axis is thought to be the source of this uh, positive blood culture. So I will mark uh, the suspected source of this positive blood culture as the vascular axis. A source other than the vascular axis, uh, if either uh, one of these two condition, a culture from another site, uh, like uh, the infected leg uh, wound or uh, urine sample, show the same organism that found uh, in the blood and the site uh, thought to be the source of this uh, positive blood culture, or either uh, there is a clinical evidence uh, of infection at another uh, site which is uh, thought to be the source of this positive blood culture, even if not sampled or cultured. Suspected source uh, contamination. If the organism isolated from the blood culture, 
is taught by the physician or by the infection uh, preventionist or uh, the head nurse to be a contaminant. Also, the contamination is more likely if the organism is one of the common commensal and is isolated from only one uh, blood culture. Here uh, is a list of the common that can lead to uh, contamination, uh, like the diphtheroids, uh, Bacillus species, uh, coagulase negative uh, Staphylococci, including the Staph epidermides, uh, Ferredens uh, group, Streptococci, Aerococcus species, or Micrococcus uh, species. Uh, you will also mark uh, the suspected source as uh, uncertain only if there is insufficient evidence to decide among uh, the three previous suspected source uh, category. The third type of the dialysis event, which is the bus redness or increased swelling at the vascular axis uh, site, uh, you will report each new outpatient episode. Uh, where the patient has one or more of the following symptoms. Uh, the one is uh, the bus, the presence of bus, or uh, greater than expected redness or greater than uh, expected swelling at the vascular axis, regardless uh, of uh, the, the patient receiving treatment or, or not. Also, again, for the 21-day rule for uh, the bus redness or increased swelling, uh, there must be 21 days between the onset of the first uh, episode and the second, uh, the onset of the second episode to report the uh, second uh, event as a, di a separate dialysis event. So, uh, if the second onset of the uh, pus or redness or case swelling is less than 21 days, so uh, it is not reported as a separate dialysis event. If more than uh, 21 uh, days between the two onset uh, of episode, uh, the second one will be reported. So how to apply 21-day rule for uh, the bus redness or increased swelling? I will look to the onset of the first episode to the onset of the second episode. If more than 21 days, I will report. If, no, if less than uh, 21 day I will not report. In the first example, uh, it was uh, 16 day. So in this uh, case, the second onset of episode will not be uh, reported. In the second uh, example, it's more than 21 day. So the second onset of episode uh, is reported. Uh, the calculated dialysis event, also the CDC and NHSN define another method for uh, calculating the dialysis event from the uh, previous uh, three type of the dialysis event. The first one, uh, it is bloodstream infection. Uh, it's called for uh, any positive uh, blood culture, uh, local access site infection, uh, the presence of bus redness swelling uh, of the vascular axis, and the bloodstream infection is not uh, present. Uh, access related bloodstream infection, uh, any positive blood culture with the suspected source identified as the vascular access or uncertain. The vascular access infection, either uh, a local uh, access site infection or uh, access related bloodstream infection. The numerator uh, data for the dialysis event, uh, you will complete a dialysis event form we have a designated form for reporting the dialysis event. If the maintenance hemodialysis outpatient has one or more of the uh, previously explained uh, uh, type of the dialysis event, which is the IV antimicrobial start or the positive blood culture or the presence of bus redness or increased swelling at the vascular access site. Uh, when you report the dialysis event, uh, if the patient have or has a positive blood culture and begin the IV antimicrobial, uh, this two type of uh, there's event will be uh, recorded uh, together on one form. That means this is uh, a combined event for the same patient uh, at the same time. So uh, you will report uh, or record this two uh, type of event uh, on the same uh, form. When you reporting the there's event together, always, uh, as we mentioned before, will use the date of event, the date of the first event that uh, occurred.
refer to the there is even definition for the 21 day rule and do not re report the unrelated uh, there is event on the same form so uh, as a summary if the uh, patient have different event type uh, on the same month you will report this uh, different event type on the same form with the date of event is the date of the first event occurred uh, the same event type uh, twice for the same patient in the same month you will stock to the 21 day rule if more you will report the second on another form or if less you will not uh, report the second uh, event for any type of event in different month you will use a different form for reporting this uh, type of event this is uh, the daily event form uh, it includes the patient information uh, or demographic of the patient if the patient is transient patient yes or no vascular access information to identify the vascular access for uh, this patient uh, the uh, also information about the event itself uh, you will mark uh, the event that the patient have uh, from the IV antimicrobial start or the positive blood culture or the presence of pus redness uh, or swelling at the vascular axis it also includes uh, if there is a problem is associated with this event uh, also you will specify the outcome uh, uh, of this event if there is uh, organism also identified you will uh, put the name of the organism and fill out the uh, organism and sensitivity section of the dialysis event form for uh, the dialysis event denominator data, uh, the denominator are the, the count of patients by their vascular access type that uh, estimate the number of patient month which is our denominator here in the dialysis event. Uh, patient month that uh, consider at risk for dialysis event. Uh, for the instruction how to report the denominator data, uh, each month you will report the number of hemodialysis outpatient and their hemodialysis vascular access type who are receiving the hemodialysis treatment at the center during the first two working days of each month so uh, to report the denominator data for hemodialysis uh, we will uh, count all the hemodialysis outpatient that come on the first two working days uh, on each month and there is a special instruction uh, for uh, the denominator data uh, we will count each patient only once so if the patient come in the first working days I cannot count the patient uh, if they come on the second day uh, all the hemodialysis uh, outpatient uh, are included uh, that means all the hemodialysis that come on the first two working days will be included in our uh, denominator uh, including of course the transient patient as we uh, prescribed in the previous slide uh, the patient must be physically present uh, in the center for the hemodialysis uh, to be counted on the hemodialysis denominator form. Uh, exclude the non-hemodialysis uh, patient and exclude uh, the inpatient. As we mentioned, this dialysis even surveillance protocol uh, is uh, not suitable for inpatient. Uh, if the patient has multiple vascular access, uh, even if this vascular access is not uh, in use, uh, we will record the patient once. Uh, we will report only the vascular access that uh, uh, associated with the highest risk uh, of infection as we uh, uh, prescribed that point uh, in the uh, previous slide. Uh, the rank for each vascular access type and the association uh, with increasing the risk of infection with each vascular access type therefore uh, if the patient for example uh, if the patient has both implanted access device like the graft or fistula and have another vascular access uh, like uh, central venous catheter we will count this patient as having the uh, central venous catheter uh, because it's associated with highest risk of, uh, the, of the infection uh, accurate data is strictly required in order to produce reliable rates here are some instructions for defining the working days 
the first working uh, days of the month should provide the opportunity to the to capture all the patients who receive the hemodialysis at the center uh, during these days. Uh, for example, uh, if the uh, facility dialyzes the patient six days uh, a week from Monday uh, to uh, Saturday, uh, while uh, the Sunday uh, the facility uh, is closed. So if the first day of the month uh, fall on Sunday, I will consider uh, Monday and Tuesday uh, the first two working days uh, on this month. This is the hemodialysis denominator form. Uh, th there is uh, information about the surveillance month. You will define uh, the month of the surveillance, uh, the location or the name of the center, and the date of the data uh, collection. Uh, here it's uh, the information about the, the number of hemodialysis uh, outpatient that come on the first two working days. You will count uh, the number of patients that come on the first two working days and identify uh, the type uh, of the vascular access uh, that they have. And uh, at the end, uh, you will count the total number uh, of patients uh, for the first working days and uh, the total number of the patient month that will be used as denominator for dialysis event. How to calculate the dialysis event uh, rate? Uh, you will divide the uh, number of the dialysis event, which is our numerator, uh, by the patient month, which is our denominator, and we explain what's mean by patient month, uh, and multiply uh, the result by uh, 100. Uh, the dialysis event may be uh, stratified or calculated according to the dialysis event type, the IV antimicrobial star, the positive blood culture, the presence of bus redness or increased swelling at the vascular axis, and it can be stratified also by the type of vascular axis that we have. Now we will talk about the dialysis uh, bundle, which is a group, a group of evidence-based practice that when implemented together, it will lead to a better out patient outcome and uh, one of the best prevention strategy to reduce the healthcare shredded infection and event. The component of hemodialysis bundle for uh, the catheter, it's include uh, the hemodialysis catheter connection. We have a certain step that will uh, be followed during this uh, step. Uh, hemodialysis catheter disconnection and the hemodialysis catheter exit site care. Uh, the dialysis station routine disinfection and the hemodialysis injectable medication preparation and it administration. Here is the hemodialysis uh, bundle form for the catheter. You will find the detailed instruction for each uh, component uh, of the uh, bundle of the catheter. Uh, it contains uh, detailed instruction for the hemodialysis staff that should be followed during uh, the hemodialysis uh, session or hemodialysis uh, treatment for this type of uh, population. And this component and uh, instruction should be uh, monitored uh, and documented uh, in the patient uh, medical record. So uh, in every session that the patient receives uh, hemodialysis session, you will monitor uh, the compliance in every session for all of this uh, bundle component. Here the hemodialysis bundle component for the fistula and graft vascular axis, arteriovenous fistula and graft cannulation, arteriovenous uh, fistula and graft decannulation, the dialysis station routine disinfection and uh, injectable uh, medication uh, preparation and administration. The hemodialysis bundle uh, form for the fistula and graft vascular axis. Uh, you will find detailed instruction for the hemodialysis uh, staff about each uh, component of the hemodialysis bundle. In the same way, you will uh, monitor uh, the compliance and uh, should be documented for each hemodialysis session for this type of uh, patient. Here uh, is an uh, uh, explanation how to calculate the dialysis uh, bundle compliance. You will take the total number of patients with catheter or arteriovenous fistula and graft that are 
compliant with, with all applicable bundle component defining uh, on the total number of patients with catheter or arteriovenous fistula and graft that are reviewed for bundle compliance and multiply the result by 100. It's also uh, possible to calculate the dialysis bundle compliance per each vascular access type. At the end, thank you so much for listening and see you again in uh, upcoming lecture.